Hi, I'm Dagmar Steiner and in this video I want to introduce you to my painting techniques and my newest painting of Labrador Haley. And this is done with pastels and I will just show you a few techniques that I use and also how I start out. For example, you, I'm using a lot of darks here as you can see. She's a black lab and when you use that without any protection on your fingers, it'll be really, really hard to get that washed off and it's you know the more you work and you need to get out of the house to go somewhere you don't want black fingers or anything it's, it doesn't look good and so I have I got invisible glove that's my favorite go-to it feels a little weird when you put that on you just put it on like lotion like that I'm not supposed to do that but this is about the amount I use and then you just spread it on your fingers you wait for a little while until you can actually touch your pastels again but it will give you that nice um, feeling of the glove without actually being a plastic glove or anything that makes you feel like you're not in touch and in sync with the material you use. Uh, it's really it takes some getting used to, but once it's dried, you don't think about it anymore. So then you can actually pick up the pastel sticks here. Sometimes I just leave the paper on for forever just because I like to read what kind of paint what color it is and for the aesthetics and protection here because you have that when you touch them you don't get the, the paint on your fingers but eventually you have to take it off which I did right here and then you will get it on your fingers a lot even in your face sometimes I have done that um, but it doesn't happen too much so here's the photo I used let's see if that works yeah okay still works with the invisible glove on the touch screen Here's Labrador Haley, and I just zoom into the part that I'm working on right now, which is her chest. The tongue I'll wait with a little bit because it's a whole different color scheme. And I started closing in on her hair, and it goes like this on her chest, this direction. Always make sure that you paint into the direction that the hair is growing to make it more realistic. And see, for example, right here, the hair has a sweep upward, so you want to include that as you paint. And I'm just doing the groundwork, basically, to build up the lights. You start with the darker color on the bottom, and then you can go into any kind of shading and getting lighter as you come up to the surface, I would call it. So let me see. Here we have that covered. And you see right here? It's not black. It's a darker gray tint with a little bit of blue in it. And as you go into, you learn as you go to, to see those colors that are not obvious to the eye right away when you look at it. It's just gray or black, but it really isn't. There's all kinds of different shades. Of course, because the dog's outside, you got the leaf, all this foliage in the background reflecting. So this is not white. Her face right here is not just white. It's all of the colors of the leaves here coming into that part. So there's a little bit of really, really light yellow and maybe a little bit of a bluish tint, but only in certain parts. But let's get back to what I was talking about earlier. You just make sure you got the ground covered and all in that direction. And the reason I'm not using these pastel sticks with here it's just because you can turn it around and get this really nice edge if you break them when you need it and especially around the tongue here you want that so here again here you can see it gets darker here you just and the hair grows in that direction so you just sweep it in that direction right here so you cover all that and here you want to do more underpainting so you have dark underpainting to build your light colors on. And it's not very easy to talk to you right now while I'm doing this because usually I, my thoughts trail when I work. I usually listen to music and um, I don't, I'm not used to talking while I work. So forgive me if I just that's in some parts don't say that much. But I'll get better <laughs> as I do this. 
Okay, we want this cover. Hair grows this way on this side. Just very, very loose work right here. I also, since this is her body and not really the focus you need, you don't have to go into all that detail right here. You want this to stand back a little because this is the focus that you want. All the detail on the nose, on her eyes, and on the tongue. There's a lot of detail on the tongue. You don't want people to just sit here and go, wow, and count all the hairs. You want them to stay here within the painting. So here you go. Here you see the lighter hairs. Just a tad. Not really. So this might actually be too light, this color that I had first. So you stay dark because you can always build into the lights. Once you're too light, it's hard to build the darks back up on this. See, so just add those little strokes again in the direction the hair grows. Here, you have that. And also make sure you don't make too long of the strokes because her hair is, she's not a golden retriever. Her hair is not that long or or setter or anything. Just make sure that the length of the hair always works with the type of dog breed you are painting and the part of the dog you're painting. Her hair on the head is really short, so you want short strokes. Her hair on her coat is a little longer. Right here, it is fall after all. The hair does get longer. So you just make a little bit of longer strokes right here. So, and here, Builds a little lighter than that, so you can move in lighter. And I don't blend with my fingers very much anymore. I used to do that, but then the painting kind of looked flat. You want that edge to it, and not only you accomplish that when you don't blend with your fingers. If you have a halter or some smooth surface, you blend with your fingers or those blending tools that you can get for pastels, but not on something like a fur coat. Okay. It's got a little bit too light, so you go back in the black right here. See, you don't need to blend. It does blending all by itself. That's the beauty of pastels. Okay. And then you got the same thing, just go this direction because this is where the hair meets, right here on her chest. You go back in this way with her hair. And this is what I did throughout her entire body. I'm sorry that I already finished the head. I would have loved to show you the, how the head was done, but we'll have more of that in the future. I'll take you through the how you build up the, the expression in the eyes and the nose. So just tune back in on more videos to come. Thank you very much.